Hey, here's an update, and it's important for preppers and survival types and people that are wanting to do some off-grid power projects that involve the 12-volt systems. There is a piece of pending legislation that is probably, they're talking about it happening, it's going to be for uh, tariffs and trade restrictions in the United States against uh, Chinese-made solar panels. And uh, this is one of them. Okay, now this is from one of the companies that is uh, similar to a couple I've dealt with in California where they do their products because it's a Chinese family owned type of outfit. Some of them are made in the U.S., some are made in China. It varies a little bit from panel to panel. A lot of their outfits also sell the individual cells so you can buy like kits and make your own panels and there's a lot of guys with how-to videos on that now. Now a panel like this, this is a 70 watt panel, it's roughly 3 feet by 2 feet. It's uh, monocrystalline, which means it's older technology, but it produces a lot of technology, uh, a lot of power for the square footage area that it takes up. And uh, except that it requires pretty full sunlight to give you that full 70 watts, otherwise it's going to act just like a Harbor Freight 15 or, or 30 watt panel, 30 watt pair. But in full sunlight you get a lot more power. Um, up to recently, you could you could score these things for about oh 150ish, 130ish. Uh, they went down in price. I, I picked this up for like 111 plus shipping, but I ended up paying uh, a lot for shipping. And while it was in transit, the price went up 20 percent because what's been happening is there, there was a little bit of a price war on uh, solar panels. And now the uh, U.S. companies and German companies are asking for trade restrictions against the Chinese stuff, which is going to hurt the consumer because the U.S. and German-made stuff, they, uh, they don't come out in these oddball sizes you need. A lot of them are doing just big, uh, like, six-foot by four-foot panels, which don't work very well in a lot of portable applications because they're just too big. The other thing is that when you deal with panels that are really big and in a lot of these, the way they're tabbed, which is the way this is all put together, and you get your little connector box back here, is that when you're, you're talking about less frame material and, and fewer of those little connector boxes when somebody makes a panel uh, where they're putting a hell of a lot of cells on it and wiring it up so you get you know a larger panel with more power, but if that panel takes a hit, a hail crack, a bullet hole, uh, something falls on it, the entire panel's bad. On your survival retreat, mobile application stuff, it's not a bad thing to use a large number of smaller panels to uh, have redundancy in your system. Yeah, but what's going to happen is these smaller uh, panels are going to become not only difficult to get if there's going to be trade restrictions on the Chinese stuff, they're also going to be a lot more expensive. So my suggestion right now, this is uh, February 2 of 2012, uh, if you're thinking about doing some off-grid stuff, purchase panels now, shop your sale prices, Shop the liquidators right now. There's a big change happening in the industry uh, at this time. It's corporate. It's not technology. It's not a technology change. And get panels now. Uh, now, with regards to charge controllers, grid tie inverters, and all that kind of stuff, they, it, that's not really critical. Okay, that stuff's still going to be available. It's it's not that big of a deal. But panels are going up in price right now. This one went up in price 20% as it was uh, on the way to me. It's a 70 watt panel. Um, I, I sold a few of these over here in Portland and um, everybody seems happy with them. And the, uh, but the thing is, is I'm buying what I, what I can grab right now because I know they're going up in price. In fact, 20% in a week is, you know, that's that's kind of like when silver and gold were on a big climb. And this stuff is a little bit more useful than silver and gold, but obviously you've got storage space issues if you're trying to keep 50 grand worth around or something like that. But if you're a contractor or you're a builder or you're, uh, you know, like uh, on the higher end of handyman work and you're looking at maybe installing some off-grid systems for a profit, I would consider seriously stocking up on some panels because you're going to make a good profit on that stuff this year. Okay, uh, soon you'll make a, a good profit on it. it. Stuff's popular, people like it. There's some big corporations really trying to take advantage of uh, 
the market and a tax incentives. They're 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 talking about changing laws. They're talking about changing uh, 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 building codes to uh, make it a little more restrictive to put this stuff in, so that you got to pay more for it. And uh, but if you already have it installed on a piece of real estate, then it is uh, grandfathered in. The other thing I've learned is that if you install these things on the roofs of uh, cargo trailers, camper trailers, RVs, there's there's no building code or uh, requirements involved. Um, you know, as far as being a licensed electrician, uh, this shit's dirt simple, folks. Uh, a 12 year old can build this stuff. You got 12 year olds on 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 YouTube demonstrating it. Okay. I went through a bit of a learning process with my last project, and I've, I've redone a few things on it, but come on, man. This this is not, you know, burn your house down if you wired a 220 thing wrong type of territory. The other thing that's uh, a bit of a flux in the industry right now, I was notifi notified of it by a, um, a windmill manufacturer here in Oregon, is that there is talk of the small grid tie inverters also being technically made illegal and so what's happening with the small grid tie inverters is you're legal to purchase them but due to regulations on ratings of uh, electronic devices that are capable of feeding power back into a power grid uh, you, you may be breaking some regulations by plugging one into the wall and using it to pump power back into the power grid now, is it doing any damage? No. Um, would you go to jail for it? Probably not. Would you get fined for it? Uh, potentially, yes, but probably not. Here's what the problem is on small installations, is that if you're a contractor or a builder, you, you can't use the stuff that's not rated. And if you look at those little 300 to 600 watt grid tie inverters that a lot of these home project guys are using, they're not rated, they're not legal for a installation that you're going to try and collect incentives on. Uh, they, they could be a legal problem if you're trying to sell the property and you consider those as part of the value of the property that makes it worth more. So you, you'll run into that issue with that stuff. Now you can keep an eye on the legislation on this and, and some of what's going on with it because the freedom to produce your own electricity is part of the freedom to live a, a little bit more modern and comfortable lifestyle off the grid and without dependence on the big corporations because once you own this stuff you own it okay once you own this stuff even in a mobile application you can set up a uh, home whether it's improvised or regular you know eventually constructed brick and mortar type stuff uh, out in the middle of nowhere where real estate's really cheap and you're probably not as dependent on the corporate economy to survive and you're, you're not going to be living like a caveman okay you know, I, I've, I've got to make a couple of more videos about you know a lot of people whose idea of bugging out in survival is that they want to go someplace and and live like a caveman but be able to tote around a three thousand dollar rifle and a 600 bucks worth of fancy survival knives and let me tell you something on, on that whole off-grid uh, 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 camper solar camper project I'm working on I've got a project price cap of 3500 bucks on that and there's a couple of reasons for that but there's a, there's a project price cap of 3500 bucks on that hey that's the value of a well decked out AR and I'm, I'm going to make another video discussing that situation, but I want to get this thing out right now on the uh, solar panels. The end of this is that if you're thinking about buying solar panels, if you're thinking about an off-grid type of project, buy your panels now. Shop around. Buy your panels now. They're going to be going up in price. They're going to be going up in value. Don't worry too much about the batteries or charge controllers right now. Prices on those are not going to change significantly in the near future. Panel prices are going up.